Today we're going to be taking notes from nature, the process in nature that I think that trans people can learn a lot from. So if you want to hear more about the trans experience, keep watching. So if those, those of you who aren't familiar with butterflies to a stupid degree like I am, I want to explain to you the process known as diapause. Diapause is the scientific term for what happens to a butterfly in chrysalis who may be crystallized late in the year and there is an instinctual knowledge to overwinter. And that chrysalis may not open for a full year, but it will open when spring comes again. And there's a lot of reasons why this may happen. Um, a lot of factors play into it, but specific species it happens to more, like swallowtails or, um, for instance, uh, morning glory or a uh, morning cloak, as it were. So something about this process prevents too many butterflies from it closing at the same time. And niche, the niche of these creatures is very specific. You know, if a million butterflies come out at once, it won't do any good. But the process of diapause allows certain chrysalis to wait until the next year and start their cycle as everything is blooming again. It's essentially the butterfly knowing to wait, you know, wait and weather the winter in the chrysalis, knowing that once the winter passes, that's when all the food, the flowers, that's when they're gonna be available. And this process is entirely instinctual. Diapause does not happen to all species. It rarely happens to monarchs, um, but it really often happens to swallowtails. And one of those reasons I believe is because swallowtails have a shorter lifespan than monarchs do. The lifespan of a swallowtail, they need to get in while it's good. They need to be able to breathe and spread their wings and fly and do all this stuff. And in the middle of winter, that's just not appropriate. So what does this have to do with trans people? Well, I think that we as trans people could take some notes from butterflies because they've been around for a really goddamn long time. The chrysalis is a vulnerable metamorphosis state that they go into and it's an indeterminate amount of time until they come out. Yes, there's an average, you know, for a monarch, let's say the average is three, four weeks. But for a swallowtail, the, that average is really thrown off by diapause because some of them can come out in like six to eight weeks and some of them won't come out for a full year. And that is because they know they need that extra time. Some trans people need that extra time. Some people in general need extra time for self-care or just self-preservation. And trans people in particular, I did another video on this, they go through a lot of change. Sometimes it's all at once. Sometimes when you come out as trans, you also have to come out at work, come out to your friends, come out to your family. You're, you're bound to be rejected by someone. This is happening at the same time as a physical transition if you're going on HRT, which means the moodiness, the depression, the swings, all of that, puberty. And this could also be coming at the same time that you have to relocate, you have to move. So if you do all that at once, I think it would be akin to cracking an egg too soon. You know, you can't hatch an egg. You cannot enclose a chrysalis. If you need to wait an extra year for your chrysalis to enclose, that is appropriate. You know, you have to wait until it's spring again. And I think a trans person who is maybe early on in their transition and watching this, my advice for you is try to go into a state of diapause. Don't just caterpillar to butterfly, you know? Don't just rush yourself, thrust yourself into the limelight. But thrusting yourself into all this change could damage your health, it could impact your safety. And for the most part, I don't think it's worth it because you can only handle so much. And if you do not take care of yourself now, you won't later. Another thing I wanna talk about is my other video, especially the one on eating disorders, where I mentioned that if you're trying to physically transition, you cannot be amidst an eating disorder or be amidst some other self-destructive tendencies and not anticipate that that will impact the transition. You know, my anorexia had gotten so bad that I wasn't able to physically transition because my body wasn't able to metabolize my medicine. My body was barely able to physically change at all because it was starving. And I'm not saying that it's easy, but I am saying that if you want these results from HRT that everybody talks about, you have to make sure you're not getting in your own way. You have to make sure you let yourself 
metamorphosize as it were otherwise you'll put so much strain on yourself you'll put all this change at once that none of it will actually happen the way you want it to and one bit of advice that I have to give every time somebody asks me is the transition is about the process it's not not about the destination because I've been on estrogen for seven years and I'm still not at my destination but if you are focused on that destination the whole time, you will not enjoy the journey at all. So please take some time. Take some time to think about what you're eating. Am I gaining weight? If you're not gaining weight while you're on estrogen, that might be a sign that you are under consuming. Not that everyone should want to gain weight. I'm not saying that, but that's what the drug does. It does. It, side, it has a side effect of extra fat deposit. So you don't even have to eat extra, but if you're eating less, you might notice because you're not gaining weight and estrogen binds to the fat receptacles in your body so if you're like i was and you are a complete stick when i started my transition i was 108 pounds 108 now i'm like 150 and i'm not gonna lie i think i look great but that is so much more weight that my body is carrying now that now that i realize this i'm almost six feet tall that is much more appropriate than 108 pounds so I'm not shaming you if you are struggling. An eating disorder is not something you can sh just shake off, but you have to keep in mind how that's gonna impact your transition. If you do not go into your chrysalis, you will not come out a butterfly. You know, a caterpillar doesn't just eat a bunch and then just sit on the leaf and wait for everything to change for them. They have to protect themselves. They have to go dormant. And that dormancy, I'm, I don't mean literally, you know, people have to work, they have to see people, but that dormancy could be you transitioning in secret. The first time I went on HRT, I did not go by a new name. I wasn't using new pronouns for a whole year and a half. And you don't have to follow my timeline, but some people I think feel shame when they tell people they're trans, but then don't change anything or don't change their pronouns. And then you have to deal with people being like, I don't know if you're actually trans. I mean, this is too confusing for me. And you know what I say to that? No, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. you have to hoe your own road. You have to pave the way for yourself because nobody is laying out a path for you. Nobody is saying, well, oh, you want to transition? Well, let me just help you with that. I mean, I wish they were, but not many people have that kind of support system. And chances are, if you try to do it all at once, you might lose what support system you do have. So take some notes. Diapause is a real thing. Maybe you're thinking about your transition right now, but you're at a job where you know that you would really struggle socially if that happened. Maybe you can start your transition and just not tell them. That's what diapause is for a trans person. You're gonna overwinter. You are going to protect yourself and only start to fly when it's spring again, you know? There's no timeline, there's no rush, and that's the thing too is if you're starting and you don't know where to start, it might be because it feels like this really overwhelming, big change. But you know what made me start? Realizing I didn't have to start estrogen, I didn't have to start my transition to name change, I didn't have to do all that. All I did, I started spironolactone. I was on spironolactone for nine months before I decided to transition. And I am so, no, I think it was a year. But I am so glad I did that because it gave me time. One step at a time is the only real way we can make all these changes. You know, you're not gonna go to the doctor, get some estrogen, tell all your friends to call you a new name, do all that, you're just not. So lay out maybe a master plan, maybe your evil plan. How am I gonna become who I've always wanted to be? Step one for me was spironolactone. Step one for you could be seeing a therapist, you know? It doesn't matter where, as long as you pace yourself and you take notes because as soon as you start comparing your journey directly exactly to another person's journey you're going to be unhappy because it's not going to be the same it might not be as fast it might be slower it might be faster but the point is is that every butterfly has a different life cycle some butterflies don't go into diapause at all some butterflies come out in four weeks and some take a year and that's okay you know I know somebody who was on four years of HRT before they started living full time as a woman. And that is totally normal because it's scary. And depending on where you live, it's inconvenient and dangerous to be trans. 
So that is when I recommend taking this advice. You know, if everyone in your life already accepts you, I'm not telling you to go back into your cocoon, but if you're afraid, don't try to hatch an egg. That's all I'm saying. Remember that every moment you take is one extra time. Like every time you slow yourself down, take some time to rest, you know, get lots of sleep, drink lots of water, that's gonna be one step closer to the woman or man you wanna be, you know? And so many trans people, they don't eat right, they don't sleep right, they're overworked, they're stressed as hell, they're depressed as hell, and all of that is not their fault. Not one bit, but it does affect their transition negatively, and it's something that you need to work on. And you know, we need to talk about it, because if we don't talk about it, no one will. So I don't want to ramble on much longer. If I had to summarize this video in a sentence, it would be take as much time as you need. One step, that's all you need to do. If you don't know where to start and you're too afraid, see a therapist, talk to someone, call a friend, tell one person. Do not overnight open your chrysalis. If you have to go into diapause waiting till February before you let it open, do it because that's what nature does, and nature is resilient. So if you liked this video, I would really appreciate a like, a comment, subscribe. If you hit the notification bell, you'll see that I'm uploading every day now. And if you are liking the comment, or if you're liking the content, please let me know because I really love to hear from all of you. I try to respond to everyone. And I, I'm really happy to know that I've made a difference because so many of you have told me that what I'm doing is helping, and that is the most beautiful feeling in the world. So, happy holidays, spend some time with the people you love. If you're being rejected by the people you love, find people who do love you and won't do that to you. And most importantly, get some sleep, get some rest, drink some water. Have a good day.